Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So it's been about six months since I first got the Steam Deck in my hands. And we're seeing more and more people get the device delivered to their mailboxes. In fact, Valve has been knocking it out of the park in that regard. And so I thought it would be a good time now to do an update to my emulation showcase video that I did about six months ago. I think at this point, we all know that the Steam Deck is incredible when it comes to PC gaming, especially at the price point of starting at $400. But I was surprised to find that the emulation capability of this device has improved greatly since we first tested it a while back. And so in this video, what I'm gonna do is just run it through the whole suite of games and see exactly what you can expect when it comes to emulation, specifically on the Steam Deck. And long story short, this is easily the best emulation handheld that you can get in terms of price to performance. The fact that this thing can play just about everything at that $400 plus price point is just kind of crazy. And so kick back, grab a drink, and I hope you enjoy the showcase. Let's go. Okay, to start, let's talk a little bit about my setup. Now, to get what you're seeing here on the screen, I'm using an app called EmuDeck. And I've made videos about this before, but EmuDeck is actually going through a full update, and I'll make an updated guide here pretty soon. The beauty about this setup is that I can choose specific games to show in my regular SteamOS interface, but I can also load up Emulation Station to host all of the games within there as well. And so basically, I can have the best of the best show up in just my regular SteamOS interface, but by going into Emulation Station, I can have access to everything. Now, like I mentioned, EmuDeck is going through an update, and I've been testing the beta release of this right now. Essentially what this is going to do is give you a graphical interface when you first set up EmuDeck to simplify the process. It'll give you the option to store everything on an SD card, and they're also expanding support to other devices like the Win 600. From there, you can choose which emulators you would like to have installed on the Steam Deck, and there's a super easy way to add things like retro achievements or to customize the bezels that'll show up in RetroArch. On top of that, you'll have choices for aspect ratios with various systems, and you can also preview and choose your shaders right then and there. There's going to be other features coming like cloud saves, but for now, we'll save that for the guide video when it comes. Either way, what I'm going to focus on here in this video is the showcase of what kind of emulation performance you can expect. We'll start with the very easiest systems and then move our way up from there. Now, when it comes to those lower end systems, things from NES all the way up through PSP, I actually prefer to use those in RetroArch. And there's a couple reasons for that, but the main one is I love having standardized hotkeys. That means I can press things like select and R2 to have a fast forward component, or I can press select and start to quit out of the game and get back to the menu. Anyway, my take on it is if you can play RetroArch and it works at the screen resolution of the Steam Deck, then I would recommend using that instead of the standalone emulator. It's just going to give you a more standardized experience, and so I recommend doing that all the way up to PSP. Either way, as expected, these are going to play just fine. And for some 4x3 systems, I chose to use the bezels that are provided by EmuDeck, but but for others, I chose to use widescreen hacks to fill up the screen. Again, these are going to be all choices that you can have within EmuDeck when you first set it up, and I really appreciate how much it simplifies the process. So anyway, yes, when it comes to emulation all the way up through PSP, you will be able to upscale it to at least the Steam Deck resolution and still have great performance. And really, there are no surprises there. So let's move on to some of the higher end emulators and see how the performance goes now. First and foremost, if you remember on my old video, when it came to emulation with GameCube and Wii, I actually found it a little bit lacking. I knew the Steam Deck was powerful enough to play those systems with no problem, but I was still experiencing a lot of slowdown. At the time, I just figured it had to do something with optimization of the emulator or maybe the Steam Deck setting. Either way, now when it comes to GameCube, you should be able to play at a 2x resolution and things look really good. So if anything, I think the emulators have improved over the past 6 months. And just a note here, I have turned on the widescreen hack. Most of the games will play just fine like that, but you may get some distortions with certain games. Now one thing I do recommend testing out if you'd like is go into the controller settings for each game, and then consider maybe mapping one of those buttons to the back paddle if it makes sense. For example, with F-Zero GX, I have mapped the boost power button to one of the back paddles. This means that I can hold my finger on the accelerator while still pushing the boost when I need it. And this makes playing the game so much easier. Now, out of the box, Dolphin is not perfect. In particular, with Wii games, I was experiencing slowdown like I did before. And this one has always kind of puzzled me, because if you look at the GPU and CPU load on the top left, it's only getting pushed to about 30%. 
Well, some people in the community have figured out a fix for this, and this is going to require a plugin, and I will add this to my MU deck video when I publish that later. But essentially what I've done is I've installed the Power Tools plugin, which allows you to reduce the number of threads used, and so I'm going to reduce it here to three instead of eight. And what that means is that Dolphin can only access three threads, but that also is going to push the single core performance more. Now I'm not a wizard, and I don't understand how all of this works, but this somehow will trick SteamOS to give more power performance to the CPU core. And in a real world scenario, what that means is that most games will play at 60 frames per second no problem when you reduce it to three threads. And so across the board, when it comes to Dolphin and Wii emulation, this is my recommended setting. And again, I'll show all this off when the emu deck guide is ready to go. Now, potentially, this could improve with other emulators as well, anything that would perform well with a high single core rating. But I did test a few, and I actually didn't see any difference. It only really seemed to work very well with Dolphin. But as you'll see here in a second, it doesn't really matter because all those play just fine anyway. One thing to note here is that EmuDeck will allow you to install PrimeHack. PrimeHack is a fork of Dolphin that allows you to use dual analog controls with Metroid Prime. And so here I'm running the Wii version of Metroid Prime Trilogy at a 2x resolution, and then also reducing the threads to 3, and man, this is running great. And I have an entire Prime Hack guide on my website, and this will apply to the Steam Deck version as well. Either way, yes, if you watched the most recent Nintendo Direct and you were also frustrated with the fact that they still haven't announced a Metro Prime remaster, this will be the next best thing. You can play these games at 720p on the Steam Deck and they look great. Okay, moving on, let's try out Nintendo. Nintendo 3DS. Now here I'm running Citra with the default settings that are set up within EmuDeck, which in this case are a 2x resolution. And as you can see here, the games are running just great. Not only that, EmuDeck comes with a controller profile that you can set specifically for Citra, which is going to allow you to use the back pedals to do things like swapping the screens. It's super handy. Moving on, let's do PS2 emulation. For this, we're going to use the PCSX2 standalone emulator. And like with the others, this one has also been pre-configured in EmuDeck. It's going to be running at a 2x resolution by default and most games are going to play great. On top of that, it also has the hotkeys set up automatically. The games from the PS2 era in particular had this bad habit of having cutscenes that you could not skip. And so by pressing select and R2, you can at least enable a fast forward, which on average will give you like a 3x fast forward. That's going to make some of those cutscenes a little bit more palatable. But yes, across the board, PS2 appears to be plug and play for most every game you could throw at it. Of course, your 3D platformers like Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank, they play no problem but you can push it even further with games like God of War. This one plays at a stable 60 frames here at 720p. We're going to be a little bit limited by the resolution of the Steam Deck screen, so it's not going to look like ultra sharp, but all the same, I would say it still looks really nice and totally playable. Okay, let's move over to the original Xbox. For this one in particular, I had to swap between 2x and 1x resolution to make most of the games playable. And this honestly may be my one and only complaint when it comes to emulating on the Steam Deck. Across the board, original Xbox emulation just leaves a little bit to be desired. Now, to be fair, this is a hard system to emulate. Most computers will struggle as well. And so if you are looking to emulate original Xbox games, it's probably going to be a little bit more hit and miss than you would like. For example, the first Halo game plays just fine, but some of the fighting games don't. And unfortunately, Halo 2, even when bumped down to a native resolution, just doesn't play well. So yeah, across the board, this is the one system that was the most disappointing. But we're not done yet. Let's move over to the Wii U. And I gotta say, across the board, Wii U is one of my favorite systems to emulate on the Steam Deck. Every time I booted up a game, I was just so excited to see how well they would play. And across the board, every Wii U game I threw at it was just perfect. For a couple of the games, I did make some adjustments within the settings. For example, with Wind Waker HD, I did reduce the resolution from the native 1080p down to 720p. But this is the same native resolution for most of the other Wii U games, and so no big loss there. Also, if you go into the graphics pack settings, you can add a contrast mod, which will make some of the colors pop even more. And so honestly, I think across the board, this is probably going to be the best way that you could play this exact game on a handheld device. Of course, the biggest challenge when it comes to Nintendo emulation across the board is always going to be Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. 
Now for this game, I prefer to use the Wii U version over the Switch one because I can have access to cheats and mods that are really easy to use. And I'm also happy to say that at a 720p resolution, you can put on a 40 frames per second cap and it's gonna run beautifully. In fact, I would say this runs better than it does natively on the Switch and definitely better than it does on the Wii U. And so yeah, as you can see here, Breath of the Wild is totally playable on the Steam Deck and it's honestly a joy to use. This is one of those games that really benefits from the improved ergonomics and controls of the Steam Deck in particular. All right, let's move up to PlayStation 3. As you can see here, most of the PS3 games actually play really well too. I was actually pretty surprised to see how well they perform because the PS3 emulator actually prefers to have lots of cores and threads. But even so, most of the games I played on the Steam Deck were playable. Some of them, like Dead or Alive 5, couldn't get a stable 60 frames per second, but it was still a nice experience. I don't think you'll be able to play every PS3 game under the sun, but if there are particular exclusives that you want to play on a handheld, this might be a good choice. Okay, so yes, across the board, I do think that PS3 is mostly playable on this device, but it's going to vary by game. So finally, let's move over to Nintendo Switch emulation. If you remember from my previous Nintendo Switch emulation videos, I had to kind of play it coy when it came to emulating Nintendo Switch at the time. And that was because Nintendo had been taking down videos that showed Nintendo Switch on the Steam Deck. And I think since then, Nintendo has kind of backed off from that whole thing. But just to be safe, I'm going to show the cartridge of the game that I'm dumping and emulating right here on the Steam Deck. And there's a great video from Linus which talks about the legality of dumping your own games to play on emulators. And so I'll have that linked in the video description below in case you haven't seen it. Either way, across the board, the Switch emulation on this device has gotten better and better with every month. We're basically at the point that most every Switch game that I can throw at it is just playing fine. Some games like Mario Odyssey are definitely not going to hit 60 frames the entire time, but by looking at the footage here, you can see that it is still absolutely playable. And again, with the improved ergonomics of the Steam Deck, I actually prefer to play them here than on the actual Switch. Now, sadly, not every game is going to play perfectly. Legend of Zelda is a great example. For this one, I've used a couple different mods to remove the blurring as well as the dynamic resolution. But still, even then, you can see there's quite a bit of stuttering even in handheld mode. Now, there's one other thing we can do to try to improve performance, but before we do that, let's take a quick cat break. The weather in Hawaii has finally started to cool off a little bit, and so my cat Chicken has finally started to grace me with her presence here on my lap. And so I would expect to see more frequent cat breaks in the coming months. Either way, Chicken says hello, and so let's move on to the rest of the video. Now the final thing we can do for Nintendo Switch emulation, in addition to using it in handheld mode, is to reduce the resolution down to 75%. There is actually a 50% resolution setting, but honestly I don't recommend it, the games look pretty lousy. But I do think that a 75% resolution is acceptable. It will improve the performance for most of the games, but it's still not going to be perfect as you can see here. The other thing to bear in mind is the more that you play the game, the more the shaders will cache, and you may get better performance in the long run as well. So if you have a game that's just on the cusp of being playable, I would say keep at it and maybe it'll get better. Either way, yes, across the board, I would say that Nintendo Switch emulation is very good on the Steam Deck and much better than it was six months ago. And so if you have a bunch of Nintendo Switch games and you're interested in dumping them so that you can play them on the Steam Deck, I would recommend checking out the Yuzu webpage, which has a tutorial on how to set all that up. It's not an easy process, but once you have it done, you'll be able to play your Switch games directly on the Steam Deck, which is kind of awesome. Anyway, that's about it for this video. I'd kind of been putting off this emulation showcase for a while, but kind of for a weird reason. And that's because every time I start emulating games on the Steam Deck, it kind of sours the experience for every other handheld I own. The honest truth here is that when it comes to power to performance, there's nothing that compares to the Steam Deck when it comes to emulation. Now, that being said, the Steam Deck is not a perfect console. For example, it is quite big, and the overall screen resolution can leave a little bit to be desired. But I think pound for pound, when it comes to performance and ergonomics, this is still one of my favorite handhelds of all time. And the crazy thing is here, we haven't even done any PC gaming on this entire video, because that side is a whole new world as well. But I think it's been well documented, especially compared to emulation. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And be on the lookout for my updated emu deck configuration guide, which should be coming out here pretty soon. Either way, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.